Welcome to the Billiard University, which offers assessment tools, a rating system, and learning resources to help graduate your game to the next level. This is an excerpt from the second DVD in the BU Instructional Video Series, which covers all of the topics shown here. The fifth drill deals with stun and speed control. The goal is to pocket the object ball and have the cue ball take a direct path to and end up within or overlapping the current target position. This drill is also progressive, but instead of moving the cue ball position, the rectangular target is moved. The starting position, number 4, is up against the end rail with the target turned sideways. In all of the other positions, the target is aligned with the long axis of the table. Positions 5, 6, and 7 require that you rebound the cue ball off the end rail first. You can place the cue ball wherever you want for each shot. Here's an example shot with the target at starting position 4. Here are the seven target positions. One, two, three, four, five coming off the cushion, six, and seven. Notice how in position four the target edge is directly under the nose of the cushion. This drill can be challenging because you need to aim accurately, be able to create near perfect stun, and have good speed control. Here are some examples to target position three showing some of the things that can go wrong. You can come up short, You can go long, the cue ball can have slight topspin instead of stun, creating slight follow forward, and the cue ball can have slight backspin instead of stun, creating slight draw. As with the follow drill, the cue ball needs to be within or overlapping the rectangle target for the shot to count. For example, this would be good, and this, but this would be unacceptable because the cue ball doesn't overlap the target. You need to focus very carefully on the shot aim. First of all, you need to pocket the object ball for the shot to count. Also, the tangent line needs to head nearly straight down table. If you cheat the pocket by accident, this will change the tangent line direction for the shot which might cause you to go wide of the target, especially for the higher number target positions where the cue ball rebounds off the cushion. You also need to focus carefully on the tip position on the cue ball to ensure the cue ball has stun when it reaches the object ball. Finally, make sure you keep your elbow as still as possible during the stroke into the ball so the tip will hit the cue ball where you are aiming. Also, it is easier to control cue ball stun if you place the cue ball fairly close to the object ball. That way you can use very close to a center ball hit. One approach to the shots in this drill is to use a small cut angle with faster speed, but this can be difficult to control. You can also use a larger cut angle with slower speed, but this can also make the shot difficult. You need to find the angle and speed ranges that are most comfortable, accurate, and consistent for you. Again, you don't want the cue ball far from the object ball because it is much more difficult to control cue ball stun with greater distance. The cue ball can easily develop forward roll on the way to the object ball, creating follow. And because backspin is required to create stun at the object ball due to the drag action of the cloth, you might apply too much, causing draw. Again, being close allows you to use a nearly center ball hit at most speeds. Because there is so little drag over the short distance to the object ball, it is much easier to have the cue ball arrive with stun. For the longer distance shots, for example for target position 6, where you need to rebound off the end rail, there are two approaches to adjusting. You can use the same cut angle and just add speed, or you can use the original slower speed and increase the cut angle.
Again, you will need to experiment to see what works best for you, but in general, using a consistent speed and just varying the cut angle slightly is probably the best approach. With any cut shot, the cue ball picks up a little side spin from the collision with the object ball. This is called cut induced spin. In this case, the cue ball picks up a little left or clockwise spin. On this cloth, the spin wears off fairly quickly and the rebound off the cushion is true with no angle change due to spin. But if you play on fast and slick cloth, some spin will be retained on the way to the cushion, especially with the faster speeds required for target positions 6 and 7. This is what the cue ball does when the cut-induced spin doesn't wear off completely before hitting the cushion. Instead of going in the natural rebound direction, the left spin causes the cue ball to rebound to the shooter's left. One approach to dealing with the cut-induced spin is to cheat the pocket to the right a little or allow the cue ball to develop a touch of top spin so it goes forward slightly. The induced left spin will change the rebound angle and bring the cue ball back to the target off the end cushion. Another option is to use a touch of inside English, in this case slight right spin, to counteract the effect of the cut and do spin. Again, you will need to experiment to find out what works best for you and the equipment on which you are playing. If you decide to use the same speed for each shot and just vary the cut angle, you can use points on the rail to help judge the angles for different target positions. For example, when I shoot at target 1, my cue crosses the rail close to the pocket point. And here's where I have the cue for target positions 2, 3, and 4. At 5, I'm fairly close to the diamond, and I'm above the diamond for position 6 and 7. This might seem like cheating, but it is very useful when you are practicing the drill and working on your technique and speed control. Now let's do an example run-through of the entire drill with scoring. The cue ball almost got pushed out of the target on that one, but it is overlapping, so it counts. Randy came up a little short on that one, so he returns to position 5. Well, that one did get pushed out of the target. Sometimes, when you are a little offline, the edges of the target can be mean. But other times, they can help. For example, if the cue ball is heading out from the inside, but it is slow enough to be held by the inside edge. There, the left inside edge helped straighten the cue ball a little, but the speed was a little too fast to be held by the bottom inside edge. This drill can be vicious at times, but if you stay positive and focused, you can get on a roll and recover. After shot 6, things looked pretty bad at 2, but the good run resulted in a final score of 6. That's a decent score on this drill. The Billiard University DVD series is a 3 volume set. Disc 1 reviews fundamentals and covers the exam process in detail, providing a complete how-to guide for getting a BU diploma. Disc 2 covers exam 1, the fundamentals exam, in detail, providing instruction, hot tips, and examples. Disc 3 does the same for Exam 2, the Skills Exam, covering the Bachelor's, Master's, and Doctorate levels. For more information and to order DVDs, please visit the BU website. Randy and I want to send special thanks to the BU professors for their useful feedback while we were developing the BU exams and rating system. Their input as experienced and respected instructors was invaluable.